a lot of students tell me, Svira, I've sent so many emails, I've never heard back from any PI. My very first question is, did you use a cookie cutter email? Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Today, I want to answer a question by Vine Quinong. I hope I've said your name right. She's interviewing for a postdoc and she asked, what is the best practice when you are applying for postdoc? You ask the right question with the right person because I had three postdocs, three different continents in Hong Kong, US and France for interviewing postdoc. So I hope my experience is going to help you navigate the next step after PhD. If you are going to decide postdoc is for you. And if you're wondering if postdoc is for you, there is a popular video that my channel has I am humbled by how many people are out there thinking about the same question. So if you are here because of this video, I hope this one answer your next step question after PhD and get a postdoc position if that's what you want. And remember there are many other options in Korea, so you should really check that out and decide for yourself. So assuming you want to do postdoc, even before you graduate, make sure you write to all the lab, do your research. There's a web of science videos I made is not only about searching literature. You can use Web of Science to research your research field, your expertise, and go ahead to find out who are the key opinion leaders in your field. Who are these PI who publish the most number of paper in that research that you like the most? And where are these institutions located? For example, my case, if I search Oyster, I'm situated in Brest, sounds like a middle of nowhere to a lot of people, but this is actually the place if you want to research oyster and marine science. So I'm at the right place for oyster research. And I wouldn't know about this if I didn't do my web of science keyword search. So go ahead and check that one out and find out who is that person that could be the best ideal PI. Then before you graduate, maybe six months before, write these emails and tell them what is your background of PhD, why are you interested in that lab, what is that one paper in that research lab that inspired you the most. This is important because a lot of students tell me, Svira, I've sent so many emails, I've never heard back from any PI. My very first question is, did you use a cookie cutter email? Have you written cookie cutter email like this one? A cookie cutter means you have no personality and you are not tailoring your email to your audience. Like this email, I am a PhD student interested in research and would like to discuss the possibility of starting a postdoc position in your lab. Please return my email. This email would definitely be ignored. You didn't specify why you wanted to do a postdoc in the lab. You didn't specify what type of work you're good at doing. And the PI will definitely put this in the trash can, unfortunately. So to avoid this common mistake, I hope you will watch to the end of this video and learn how not to write an email to a PI to ask for a postdoc position. Because a PI is busy and reads so many emails every day, and if you are copying and pasting text without tailoring to them, they can smell it and they will just ignore you and you'll be in the trash can of that email box. And you don't want that because if you set out the initial vibe that you are spamming people's email, then you will have a lower chance of getting through as valued team member for that lab. In your email sending to that PI, you want to show them your interest tailored to what they do and why you're interested. Give the practicality of when are you graduating and available for a potential postdoc. Tell them you are available to draft a proposal if they see any funding mechanism for postdoc because the truth is PI don't always have money for postdoc. They may know where to hunt and if you want to hunt, they will tell you how to hunt. And that's an email to initiate that contact. And you need to allow at least six months to one year to do that. 
And a lot of time, you'll be surprised in academia, a no is just a not now and not here. So I'm a strong believer that if that person turn you away for one scholarship or one quota of postdoc, and if you behave well, you know, they may find money for you and you can become the second postdoc in the lab with a creative funding that they figure out. So don't burn any bridges, show up as your best, write a humble and relevant tailored email to address your interest, be available to write anything they need to get funding, indicate your availability. Sometimes they need the project to be filled right after the year, before the fiscal year finished. There are all kinds of time constraints that you may not know. So telling them your timeline is an important information to respect the PI's decision. Tell them that you are available for a Zoom call anytime when they want. If you are smart to write your own calendar, you can just leave them a booking session that they can book you anytime in this calendarly link. And that makes you professional and ready for business. Your intention of writing that email is always to ask for that call so that you can know what's valuable to them at this moment. How can you be of great help and whether or not you'll be a good fit as a postdoc. Now at the interview of postdoc, you want to understand why that person wants a postdoc and what do they expect from you. It's a two ways interview. You're not only thinking whether you will get a job as a postdoc, you also need to think about whether or not you'll be happy in that lab and is this a good lab for you to grow as a young researcher. Do you have enough funding to do what you propose to do for example? Most of the cases, if you have independent funding, you get a lot more freedom and resources to build your portfolio because postdoc should be a step between wanting to be an academic professor, which is a really competitive market. Research has shown if you have PhD and you already had a scholarship and four papers published, you are going to be significantly stronger than the other candidates. And so as postdoc, if you have a postdoc scholarship that is protecting your time from other side hustle and side project, you are more likely to put all the steam to push that one engine instead of losing steam from everywhere because you are changing contract every three months or two months. So have all these figured out in the beginning of your interview. After your interview, make sure you send a thank you email indicating if you are still interested in that lab. Write that email and tell them you are still interested and curious about how you can work together, what are the ways that you can follow up and action items that you have noted down. And if you think that lab doesn't have resources for you, at least thank them for the time. Tell them you will be interested to stay in touch for potential suggestions, any opportunities. Someone may know someone and they may have a postdoc position opening for you. So stay in touch and try to be proactive in showcasing you're willing to work and you are available to start anytime with a relevant project. Be specific about what you're interested in. Keep the focused action to look for these opportunities. On many social media platforms like LinkedIn and Twitter, the hashtag on academic jobs, science career jobs, science jobs, you can look for openings that are shared. Make sure you follow all of these PIs and lab members of this lab once you identify who are these key opinion leaders. And if you follow them on Twitter, whenever there is an opening, you'll be the first to know. I hope these tips are helpful. It is not the best time to find postdoc with the academic freeze, but I hope this strategy reminds you that you have a lot of control in preparing yourself and doing your research to understand the research market. Remember to spend 10% of your time Keeping an eye open for alternative career, if things doesn't work out, you have a contingency plan so that you will still find a plan B that may be equally exciting and keep you engaged as a scientist in another way. Thank you for watching and I hope these are helpful. If you find my videos helpful, you can help this channel by pressing the like button and also sharing this video with your connection over Twitter, social media that will help this small channel to reach more audiences over the platform of YouTube because we don't get recommended a lot on YouTube. So thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.